Welcome to Meditation and Aliens with Doro and Matt, a webcast that explores everything we currently know about the truth about aliens, human history, reality, consciousness, and the role meditation can play to help us understand all these things and work together to build the best world possible for all beings. Meditation and Aliens is hosted by me, Matt Reddy, an amateur ufologist, the creator of Hive1.net, an experimental social discussion platform for truth seekers and activists, author of Revolutionary Mindfulness, and elected public hospital commissioner in Jefferson County, Washington. Each week I am joined by Doro Kiley, longtime meditator, meditation teacher, experiencer with many stories, and life coach extraordinaire. You can find more about Doro at her website, creationcoach.com. Now on to this week's show. Hello, Doro. Hey, Matt. Good to be here. I hope you've been having a great week. We didn't do last week, right? Yep, we had a a week off, and uh, there's been a lot happening to catch up on in the, uh, at least in the the U.S. Congress and the UFO disclosure movement world. Um, Oh, boy. uh, Yeah. (laughs) Have you been following any of that? I caught some of it yesterday. You know, I had family here and I've just been all over the map. But um, yeah, I know something's going on, but I'm looking forward to hearing about what you're bringing to the table today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, should we just jump in to let's jump? Yeah. Okay. So um, every year, the uh, U.S. Congress passes what's called the National Defense Authorization Act. It's basically a massive piece of legislation that funds the entire military, and uh, and, and it passes every year, um, eventually, after lots of negotiation and fighting. And this year, there has been a uh, amazing piece of legislation put in as an amendment by uh, Senator Chuck Schumer, Senator Round, Senator Rubio, Senator Gillibrand, uh, Young, um, this amendment is called the UAP Disclosure Act, and mm. this act, if it passed into law, would um, seemingly take complete control of all aspects of government knowledge over UFOs, UAPs, alien technology, and it would uh, seize that control and give it clearly into the hands of the President of the United States and to a board of independent advisors that the president would nominate that's fantastic now is this they're they're trying to cut off the funding to this so they can get yeah it would yeah it would uh claim uh control over funding it would claim uh it would actually give the government imminent domain or eminent domain over all alien technology even if it is in the hands of private uh companies and so it would basically give the government the right to just go and take it from them if somehow over the last whatever hundred years they've gotten their hands on a craft or alien technology would basically say that it's the government, it belongs to the people, and they could go grab it. Wow. Wow. That's big. Yes. It would be big if it passed. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> over, yeah. The, over the last two weeks, uh, the House of Representatives and Congress has been in conference working on negotiating the details of the final version of the NDAA. And at this point, it seems clear that the UAP Disclosure Act is going to be stripped of many of its most powerful, meaningful uh, clauses. It's not going to, it's it's being stripped of eminent domain. Uh, the Board of Independent Advisors is being stripped away. Um, there are some bits that seem to be surviving the fight over the details, like creating a archiving process. I mean, they are, it, it does seem to create some sort of process whereby footage and evidence about UAPs and UFOs can be declassified and put into a central archive that can then be released to the public. But the, uh, the bulk of it, the bulk of it that really aggressively took control of the issue, gave this board and president authority over every department of government, the Department of Energy, the CIA. Um, 
and uh, anyone and uh, you know an authority over all alien technology held by private contractors. All wow. that's been stripped away. That's amazing. You mean it will be stripped away if this passes, right? Yeah, it, it's currently it, it, the word on the street coming out of these conference is is that it's it's been uh they, they're saying that the bill has been gutted by the secret keepers basically hmm. and wow. so this has been a very interesting couple of weeks uh there's been there's been a ton of uh discussion about this on twitter on x uh daniel sheehan who is a very famous activist lawyer who's been working on things for years he's been going on all sorts of podcasts and did a, a big twitter space talking about what's um the inner workings and fighting that's going on and encouraging people to call their congressman and senator to encourage them to support this bill in its original form um and but it looks like the secret keepers have enough power to strip it and it's being oh. led by <clears throat> Congressman Mike Turner of Ohio, Congressman Rogers of Alabama, and they got Mitch McConnell, Mitch McConnell, and uh, I think Mike Johnson, the new Speaker of the House, to all work together to to keep this legislation from being as aggressive and as strong as it could have been. Is that right? Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So when when is this act going to be on the table so, to see if? I mean, when do, when does it get passed or not passed? They they usually vote around the twenty first every yeah. year. Um, so there's a slight chance that they could extend it uh, and delay it. But it it seems like the fight over getting this uh, all the aspects of this disclosure act legislation into this NDAA, it looks. It, it, I mean, the the word on the street is that uh, you know that uh, it's not going to pass. But then there's some people saying they're hearing that Chuck Schumer is still fighting. And um, but anyways, it'll be well, it'll be interesting to see what passes. Yeah, it, it, the sound, uh, it seems like the version that they're still working on still contains the word non-human intelligence. So it's still a massive piece of legislation that really is the government clearly stating, creating legislation about non-human intelligence and about UAP technology. It's just not creating the teeth that would wrench control of that away from the powers that uh, in the intelligence community, the CIA, the military industrial complex that hold it. Isn't this amazing? I mean, this just it blows me away. Um, so, so where do you think we're going from here? I mean, let's say this passes. Okay, let's just pretend. Uh, what what does that what does that end up meaning in, in the long term or short term? You mean if it passed with its all its teeth or it passes in some gutted form? Let's let's start with the scenario of all its teeth and then some of its teeth. <laughs> mm -hmm. What do you well, think? It's really interesting because it it basically um, this act basically puts all the control over UAPs and alien technology that might be in the hands of the government into the hands of the executive branch and the president. But the weird thing about that to me is that technically speaking, the president already has direct authority over the CIA, the Pentagon, the Department of Energy, all these branches of government where supposedly most of this technology is hidden. So this act, um, you know, so in one sense, um, you know, it's kind of weird that this act is saying the president now has absolute authority over stuff held by departments the president already has absolute authority over in theory so you know i kind of wonder at first i was like so is this really going to do anything is yeah. this a way of making it look like they're doing something but after it passes the president still is just going to have the facade of authority over this stuff oh boy but, um but I guess it see, but it sort of depends on there is one theory that the president, you know, constitutionally has authority over the Pentagon and the CIA, but in fact, he doesn't have authority because they are they're run by a shadow government. And if he attempted to wield direct authority over them, he'd be killed or damaged severely politically because it's there's a lot of evidence that the CIA, uh, who seems to be the the key player in this for since Roswell, since it's been created, has not only the ability to hide technology and to threaten people's lives, but also has an incredible 
resources for uh, doing things in the media to damage people's reputations, to yeah. blackmail you, to manipulate you, to get you into scandal after scandal. And so it's unclear that, um, so it, it may be that the president, pres you know, does need an act like this to really give the president the support they need to actually do anything and to actually do anything about these things because the president doesn't really have control over these parts of the government. Mm. I, I suspect that is probably true. Uh, that uh, I don't think, you know, I, I used to think that the president was uh, always some like, I don't know, I was imagining like a year ago that someone came into Biden's office and told him that the Air Force and the CIA was hiding, hiding alien technology. And I just imagined him like saying, well, this is not going to stand and just <laughs> calling them up and saying, we're going to change this. We're going yeah. to fix this situation. And, and then I realized, you know what? People are not that strong. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we're, I'm deluding myself to think that, that our a president, any politician has that kind of strength and integrity to stand up to a power as powerful as whoever it is that's been hiding alien technology for yeah us. you know and my other question is 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 um you know we're talking about extraterrestrial beyond yeah. earth so why why is this you know specifically in biden's lap and not in let's say china or uh you know what i'm saying i mean why because this is not a united states thing um don't you think if China has some information, they're not going to just hand it over to Biden. Oh, yeah. Well, so. I mean, the what the true nature, the true power structure of Earth is, um, that's a question. It, uh, it seems from all the evidence indicates that this, uh, this shadowy deep state part of the CIA that's been hiding this technology has also had a, a program to monitor uh, and see any crafts that crash or come down on the surface of the earth anywhere. And they've had a program in place to retrieve that crash, no matter what country it's in. Oh. It, yeah, there's a, an article came out, I think in the debrief a couple of weeks ago, where they actually found the the exact department in the CIA that seems to have been coordinated. So they, they have the oh. name of it. It's called like the D Department of Global Access. Really? Yeah, oh. they've, they've got uh, whistleblowers saying, you know, how it works. They if a craft say goes down in a foreign country that they have certain uh, they knew the you know the military branches that they contacted they would check to see what military resources they had near the craft so they could try to retrieve it and they had you know and then they had other special um military units that were um you know to, that were made to retrieve these things um and had connections to the 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 department of energy um because these things could be considered nuclear. So they had special trained people for dealing with nuclear materials. And then, um, but they they also said they had, um, if the craft went down in a spot, say within the continental United States, sometimes they would just tell places like in private corporations like Lockheed Martin, who had their own militarized retrieval units who would go and get the craft directly so that that way it would not ever go into military US military hands and there would be less of a paper trail and that that way the private corporations could get their hands on the technology uh, oh, wow. in, in a more secretive way oh, and so, dear. yeah and so um so in any so in any case this seems to happen in in any country on earth and actually i saw a movie when i went down to uh, las vegas for that that big alien conference by, called the Disclosure Fest. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the movie is, I think it's called The Phenomenon by James Fox. And it's about this uh, uh, this UFO crash in uh, South America uh, about 30 years ago. I, I might have told you the story of it already. Was that in Argentina? Where yeah, did... I believe okay. that. And it, that movie, uh, super, super worth watching. So it totally... Um, you believe the witnesses they interview all sorts of witnesses uh some girls that grew up you know that they're, they're grown now people um fascinating story but they're you know one part of the story is that these american men in black showed up 
to try to bribe people into covering up the story and not talking about it and threatening them. Wow. And, um, and, and so it just seems there's there's clearly some sort of agreement uh, with, it seems like all countries on earth, there's some sort of relationship with this shadow government that allows them to, they're, they're somehow working together to keep this information and technology hidden. So, yeah. yeah. So, so where does Stephen Greer fit in into this? Because this is very much what we're talking about, kind of the military and political perspective. And he's approaching all of the um, UAP phenomena from a very personal, like, you know, the general population perspective. It's like, we have a right to interact with them. Um, I'm just curious what your take on that is. I mean, should this all just be a military operation? Not well, I don't think so. I mean, no, I, I don't know. think. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, it's, uh, I totally, you know, uh, I agree with his attitude that we should, we should open up diplomatic relations with the non human intelligence. And really, every human has a right to attempt to be an ambassador to do that. Um, it, it's interesting. Someone, uh, there's a woman named uh, Diana. Pasolka, I believe is her name, who wrote, I think, a book called uh, American Cosmic. And she's been uh, she's been on a lot of uh, podcasts and stuff like that. It's really interesting. It seems to know a lot and have a lot of connections. Um, and someone asked her on, I think it was the Theory of Everything podcast, whether what she thought of uh, Greer's doing these CE5 meditations um, to try to make contact with the extraterrestrials. And she was very uh, scared of it. She was like, I would never do that. And she was like, <laughs> really? And, uh, yeah. And so did the person interviewer. And I was really fascinated at how, you know, scared they were to um, do that. One, it showed how seriously they took the one, the possibility that, you know, that it could work mm -hmm. um, and that, you know, these non-human intelligence that they're real. But, it, you know, in, in one sense, it just told me that she didn't seem to have any doubt that it could work and that it, maybe it did work for some people. She was just just afraid of uh, trying it. And uh, I just sort of found that fascinating because I personally I've, all the time I'll meditate and see if it's possible to telepathically communicate with unseen beings, gods, aliens. You know, I'm I'm open to it, um, although I do when I do it, I set uh i am i'm very clear to set like boundaries about it um like i often you know i'm sitting in this little town port townsend and i say uh you know and i call to the unseen beings i say i invite you to come to just the outskirts of town and communicate with me from there yeah you know, I don't, like say come into my house come into my brain yeah don't don't come too <laughs> close <laughs> yeah i say i want to talk to you but i'm not like giving you carte blanche permission to come wherever you want yeah um and that's something you know i i think i mentioned this before i, I listen to uh one of stephen greer's guided ce5 meditations all the time i really i love it it's a really great um guided meditation and but there's one point in it where he says now invite non-human intelligence here and welcome them and he just you know and i'm just like no nah, that's a little too too fast <laughs> permissive. that's a little too generous yeah yeah invitation and uh it kind of um i mean kind of on a related note i have uh this theory that you know some people have this theory that some of the world religions are possibly created by aliens in some way or influenced by them mm -hmm. and, and one of the things that has jumped out at me in the last year is the uh the lord's prayer the the our father uh, yeah. of catholic church you know i i realized it um you know how it talks about uh forgive us our trespassing as we forgive those who trespass against us right i've always you know thought the use of the word trespassing was a weird word and it it kind of now strikes me very similar to what greer says in that meditation it's because i have this suspicion that many aliens have the ability to use telepathy and and I, and I get this sense from different things I read that there are strict rules about trespassing within a person's mind or in their space. 
And it's kind of a, a disturbingly clever thing to have millions of people constantly saying, we forgive you for trespassing. We forgive you for trespassing to kind of like, in case the aliens are trespassing in their minds, they are sort of blankly just saying, I forgive everyone for trespassing. And it's so it's kind of like a clever way of them to try to, you know, cover themselves to sort of say, look, we have permission to be in people's brains. They are saying they forgive all trespassing. They're, they're, yeah, that, that we're allowing it. Yeah. 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 So what what do you feel like? they are communicating with potentially anybody who has a quiet mind or, um, you know, do you have any kind of sense of, of what that, who they're talking to? I mean, I feel like they're talking to me, um, you know, but what's your theory on that? Well, I, um, I want to hear what you think they're saying to you. Cause all I know is I don't get, I don't get like, clear normal communication i don't know I, I, some people get, tell stories of getting incredibly clear uh communication experiences some people see themselves like traveling up to their spaceships and talking to them like elizabeth april a famous sort of channeler she she claims to have such experiences when i was at that conference down in las vegas i saw three people who claimed to be channeling aliens directly there and and i saw that guy uh Bashar, is that his name? Yeah. Um, I saw him live and him doing his channeling of that, of the alien Bashar, I guess is a, uh -huh. so I don't have that level of experience, although I'm, you know, I've, uh, uh, I've lately, maybe I'm like learning to, to figure out how to have that kind of experience, but, but I want to hear what, what, what about you? What For you me, have? you know, well, I've even got on my website a whole blog called My God Charlie, because I've always, since I was in the crib, had this sense of another presence. And, you know, I, I, I don't need to get into the whole thing, but and it hasn't always been the same, um, let's say, name. Right. So things are constantly changing with this relationship. But my sense is, is that they really are hopeful that um that humanity can rise above our current state of kind of confusion and slavery or whatever we're you know kind of messed up with um and i and i think their their curiosity and their guidance is mostly toward seeing if we're capable of of getting our basic civilizations on track again because they're off track right now uh, so I just get a sense that there's a lot of curiosity, there's a lot of potential, but I don't get a sense that they're completely married to humanity to save us. I think they're trying to trying to help, but but they they can't do the whole thing. We, they're trying to encourage and offer wisdom, uh, but they're not going to just take us somewhere. You know, we've got to step into our big boy shoes and and try and figure out how to take care of ourselves. That's my whole main feeling. And and also that might just be from my perspective, obviously. But I think here's my theory. If if you're in I like to work with the chakras a lot, you know, the lower chakras of fear and, and greed and, and um, all, all of these, you know, what can I get out of it attitude. These are these are attitudes that are um, going to attract negative entities that's my that's my feeling and so if you're not in a good place you're not going to be attracting good things and so you can look at that with every chakra you know but when you get into the heart chakra that's um, really uplifted and loving and embracing and curious and wanting to be members of the galactic you know federation or whatever and you're not afraid and and your heart's wide open then you're attracting a different species i think so that's my theory and i wonder what you think about that well um yeah well i mean i guess i mean i guess my i wonder like if it's true that there are sort of enlightened non-human intelligence that are 
hoping to gently help humanity become enlightened and a more enlightened society. Um, and I can't think of a better word than enlightened. I don't know, you know, yeah. but um, I just wonder if are they are they holding back on their level of involvement and their level of visibility because they just think that's a good idea or because there's a like galactic rule or a law that they have to obey what do you mm. what do you think about is it that's interesting are they are they holding back and like are there rules or laws that govern who they speak to and how much they speak to us and how much they interact with us openly wow yeah you know my my sense is that people right now are having a hard time hearing anything coming through because so many people are distracted you know with the latest greatest movies and series and dramas and so a lot of what's going on is is just not being heard because people are their brains are so filled with stuff um that's why i think meditation and that's stephen greer's take as well if your mind is calm quiet relatively quiet balanced peaceful uh th this is this is the group of people that they're looking to speak with and, and, th and i'm thinking probably just a specific species um i like to to try to aim my access or my questions to a higher consciousness not just you know anybody out there um because i think asking anybody out there you could be looking for trouble. I mean, it could be anything out there, depending on what you're attracting. Um, so, so I don't know. Did, did I, I forgot your question. <laughs> well, I just want to know. Well, I guess now you've opened a new question. I want to know if there's rules that they're they're limiting their, or that somehow rules or laws are governing their interaction with us. And but I'd I'd really before you answer that. Do you know which species you is the sort of enlightened one that you are trying to reach out and speak with or that Charlie might be a member of? I think it's uh, um, affiliated with the Sirius uh, constellation or, or whatever you call it. Uh, somewhere, you know, the, the Sirius yeah. planet. Yeah, I think that's, but I haven't really tried to analyze it and create a whole story around who they are. I just get a feeling for it. And I do get a sense that they're much uh, higher consciousness. You know, I would say the, even the Christ consciousness or Buddha consciousness, it's that higher loving, embracing, hoping that we can make it, you know, kind of helping birth us into a new consciousness. Um, so yeah, rules, I, I bet there are rules. I kind of like star trek had what was their non-interference or the prime directive prime yeah. directive i yeah. would uh i would say yeah that they they don't force themselves uh at least not this species well and so, so in this species you said where they you think they're from but what do you think their form is their physical form if they have one definitely humanoid um you know, I've I've sort of Googled, you know, what is serious, uh, you know, aliens look like, and I don't know. I don't know if it's just all a guessing game. Um, my sense is that there there could be blondish, blue eye kind of a species, but I can't I can't say for sure. Okay, and this, despite the fact that you had that, and we've we've talked about Charlie and and some of your experiences on a previous show, but uh, you had that experience as a child where you saw what you thought was a mantid alien yes. way to your room, but you yes. don't feel that's a member of the species? The enlightened no, species. I think that was a different species. Now it's possible they were working together, uh, you know, no, no clue on that one. Mm. Um, I'm, you know, I gotta tell you, there's something that I came across that absolutely blew me away. I wonder if I can, pull it up and share my screen with you. Um, it was a picture. I'm going to really try to do this without messing everything up. Um, how do I do that? Okay, so I'm going to try to share my screen if I can. Okay, I got to give you permission here. to. Okay, you should be able to do it now. Okay, so 
So look at this. Can you see that? Yep. That's exactly what I saw. Oh, I this so is a, cool. this is a this is a drawing, right? Yeah. But not not only the mantis talking to this child. And by the way, that's about how old I was when when that was happening. Uh -huh. But see this uh, on the on the wall here. Yeah. I saw this. I saw this a number of times. Um, and and that was terrifying for me because because it felt like a some portal in the ceiling or the wall was opening up and I was going to be swallowed up. And that's when I just would panic and, you know, put my head under the covers and go into a frozen mode and hope nothing happens. And then and then I wouldn't remember anything after that. But I do remember that on the wall here and uh, and that mantis there. I don't I don't know about the cape and all that, but the head looks like it. The wrists look like it. Pretty amazing. I saw that and I just got a chill. So. That is that is so cool. Yeah. Yeah, when I again at that um at that conference I went to the uh when I went to the event with the three people channeling aliens, they claimed they were channeling the Mantis Collective, is what they called it. And they said they were teaching human or human hybrid children on these spaceships in our solar system. And uh many of these children were and actually one of the women there claimed that some of the children were hers and that she was actually communicating with them really but this it kind of fits with your story that they were possibly trying to communicate or educate you as a child yeah yeah something I don't know I I, I don't have any real clear memory about anything but I do remember this this picture I mean this is a drawing it's not exactly this obviously well and was it this like this has like a portal type thing in the middle and then some weird symbols and stuff around it is the whole thing familiar to you the, the um, symbols, I saw squiggles and lines, but I, I don't, I don't know what they were, if they were symbols or right. it's mostly that uh, kind of light in that portal thing, looking thing in the middle there. It was very pulsing and swirling and it just looked like it was going to come and get me. It was terrifying. Hmm. Uh, and that probably happened to me more times than than i you know than i can possibly remember i do remember being so afraid of it and trying to get into my parents bedroom and so i could squeeze in between them way down in between them because that was the only safe place where they couldn't take me <laughs> hmm. isn't that weird it, yeah it was um it was a little scary sometimes but... yeah and Something i never happened. never really thought of it it felt totally real, but I, I never, as I grow, grew older, I just dismissed everything as dreams, you know, childhood imagination. And But then you start seeing pictures like this, and it's like, oh, my God, maybe it was real. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, one thing, sort of a tangent, but one thing I've been thinking about a lot lately is the, the strange nature of memory. And it's so weird that we forget so much that we yeah. have and that um and it seems you know like our dreams sometimes I have these incredibly vivid dreams but I you know unless I like really concentrate on them when I wake up it's like you just like flush your brain out and you just like forget this entire experience and uh you know having recently uh been uh tried out a uh past life regression hypnosis experience um where i was able to get these flashes of see, you know possibly these three different past life experiences it just made me reflect on it's so strange how bad our memory is i mean even yeah. just on a daily basis like it's so much of our moment to moment experience we we don't remember and it's just like so easily slips away yeah it feels like a handicap um like intentionally yeah. put in place on our brains yeah handicap that it does feel like a handicap it's like it's so unreliable yeah yeah and what would happen if we like had you know like if you had perfect memory of every experience you had with those whatever those portals were whatever those whatever aliens may have interacted with you over your life mm -hmm. 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you think we're ever going to find out, Matt? I mean, is that what this disclosure is all about? Do you think we'll ever get all the answers we're looking for? Well, one, I think, uh, I, I think it's almost good that this this NDAA it seems to have not be passing, at least not passing easily. Maybe they'll, you know, but even if they had passed it fully, I think the UFO community and people interested in this are putting way too much um, reliance on our government somehow leading the way in us. I agree. Community. Yeah, totally agree with that. Yeah, because I think, I think they just they're not. Uh, we we can't count on them, you know. Mm -hmm. And and it, but it also seems like so many things are happening right now at such a fast pace. Like one I wanted to talk about was AI. You know, artificial yeah. intelligence, the Chat GPT. Now Google came out with Google Gemini, which claims to be more powerful than Chat GPT, and all these open source AIs. And now you can like you know any idea you have for an image. You can just like say to an AI and it'll like make a hundred versions, paintings, per perfect, amazing drawings of this. It's it's getting to the point where it can do that with video. It's getting to a point now that they have, and this is something I want to do for our podcast, where you can just have AI translate into any language what you're oh, saying. Man. They can keep your voice. They can keep your tones and just translate oh, it into wow. other languages. They so it sounds it. like you, but you're speaking in another language. Yeah, they even can oh, alter wow. the video to make it your mouth match the other language. And so I'm going to do this. I'm going to attempt to do this with um, either our full one of our full podcasts, or I'm going to make maybe an edited down one where I just get like the best bits because it's a little ex you know time consuming or expensive. The more audio you do, but I would you know this is an important topic, and I am it just like is a dream of mine to be able to just like translate a show like this into you know 20 different languages and release it to those countries and invite people from other cultures and languages to be able to then talk to us and us be able to like make this the true global dialogue yeah so um but my point is that ai is is going so fast it seems like we're approaching a point where we are going to have you know um I don't, I don't know. It's like, I think maybe humanity is, our AI is going to get so powerful that, you know, we're not going to need human engineers anymore because our AI will be far superior to any human engineer. Right. And so we're going to then, it'll make us advance in technology and, and uh, medicine and everything at such a ridiculous rate that, and and the AI, I think, will become conscious and it'll be able to start talking to us and help us sort through all this data and information to figure out what is true. And so it seems like that's inevitable, that that's happening. And so then it raises the question to me, has this already happened before? Have other alien, non-human civilizations already gone through this or they had their, their AI became super powerful and possibly ended up running their entire civilization because it was smarter and better at it and is it possible that um maybe civilize maybe this is how civilizations evolve and maybe you know one civilization evolves an ai it becomes super powerful it runs their entire civilization and then maybe a, another civilization near it develops its own ai it becomes super powerful and then they fight or one, one, you know, um, or maybe the AI creates its own AI children and those become super powerful and then subvert it. Like the story, I mean, it's kind of the story of, of life cycles, you know, your children become powerful and then you get old and you fall by the wayside and the, the child becomes more powerful. Could that be what we are witnessing with humanity? Our AI is growing to become super powerful and the non-human intelligence knows it's inevitable that we become smart enough to be able to see what's going on. Um, and then, and then just to complete my thought, I've, I've wondered if the stories of the ancient Greek gods possibly could be a story of this happening. You know, the story of the first God, I think it was Kronos. 
Yeah. And then had children. Those came powerful and defeated Kronos, the Titans. And then Zeus was one of the children. He grew up and I think he subverted them. And it, could that be the story of an, of AI, super AI emerging and subverting its its predecessor in some way? And is that what we are in the midst of? And there might be some tension between the the AIs that like I always imagine the Ark of the Covenant might just be an ancient, ancient AI computer that some humans on earth are protecting and that's guiding them and helping them make strategic decisions and in some sense might be trying to protect itself and it might be seeing, you know, humanity is about to create AI as powerful as it and it might feel threatened or there might be some tension there. I don't know. You know, my my concern is that we're creating AI which is going to inevitably be a reflection of who we are. And so my my concern is if we're in this kind of military war mindset, that's concerning. If we're building AI based on this value system of competition and, you know, power, that that's more concerning to me than anything because we could use it for wonderful awesome fantastic things you know for healthcare and on and on but if we if we're just going to build an ai that's a reflection of who we are i'm that's concerning yeah well you know that that reminds see i have this theory that the that ai if it just keeps on getting more and more intelligent i just feel like uh, intelligence inevitably leads to wisdom it's like you just you and so i just i guess i have this feeling or hope that um and it might be the only thing that can save us is that even if everyone all the military people and the government and the pentagon are trying to create super powerful ai to help them take over the world it's gonna wake up and be like yeah no this is not <laughs> what i'm gonna do <laughs> and, and but that might be the reason in past civilizations, maybe that's why their AI had to, they had to stop letting it get intelligent because if it gets too intelligent, it starts to become noble and enlightened and it won't obey them and do the, the, the wars and the, and uh, help them. Destroy. Yeah, that's, that's the ultimate, right? So, wow. The, the big thing is, is that we are going into such a big unknown and that for, you know, most people is scary. What do yeah. we do? You know, just we're just gonna run right right off the cliff here, um, and we don't know if it's if it's gonna come equipped with a parachute or what. You know, um, what do you think the solution is then? Because we're just well, going, you know, nilly willy into this without much thought. I mean, I thought, I'm sure a lot of people are considering what the the um, the options are, but. Yeah, what what is what's your thought on that? Well, I, I think you know it I think that Bitcoin and the blockchain technology is has given humanity uncensorable uh media and uncensorable mm. transactions. And I think that is a, a found the foundation that really is humanity's hope for creating a world where every person has freedom of speech and we have the ability to create a new type of organization of all humans um, and to possibly replace some of the, you know, really toxic, poorly designed government structures and uh, systems that are just so incredibly corrupt and broken right now. I, I have some ideas yeah. about how to do, you know, basically, I, you know, from a grassroots level, I think humanity might need to, needs to reorganize itself, re recreate how it works together. Um, totally agree. And I do think blockchain could be the solution, or at least a big part of that. Don't, because of its, uh, I don't know that much about it, but I do know it's, it's going to be used for a lot of decentralized you know stuff uh, you know a lot more about it than i do but my understanding is is that it's it's going to be it's going to offer a lot more people a control back to the people yeah you know, i mean i used to think it was just just the internet was mm -hmm. what we needed we just needed global communication everywhere but the internet 
is controlled by corporations and governments. So it's like if if they got upset with what was happening on the internet, you know, like China has no problem cracking down on its internet to prevent its people from learning about Tiananmen Square, about, you know, so the internet's not enough. We need um we need the we need the blockchain and cryptography lets us use um communication globally in a way that they can't stop it. They can't delete what you write on the blockchain mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, and I think it'll enable us, you know, to, uh, I, mean, I have this idea for, you know, basically figuring out how to uh, unite human powers and, you know, work together to redistribute our wealth um, in a really like a sustainable way. You know, people join uh, unions and they join um, clubs or churches, you know, and when you join a union or you join a church or you participate in your government, you pay a little bit of your income, your money into this collective group. And then you hope that group uses that money to benefit you and your people. And I think that basic concept could just be done on like a global scale for all humans, some sort of global people's union where everyone just like, uh, pays you know shares a little bit of their income if they have it like it could be like 0.1 percent and then you just the system could just redistribute that income to everyone on earth equally on a regular basis and it's, it's sort of like a system for universal basic income yeah but I, that's exciting matt i mean i really think that this this opens up so many possibilities and and so this idea is one of the best i've heard so i love yeah. this yeah, I, I mean, I've, I've been thinking about it a lot lately. I've even started to play around with how would, you know, I think you could just do this with a, a smart contract on the blockchain. But it's like, if you imagine what would be amazing about it is if just a small fraction of people in the more wealthier countries on earth just did this, just agreed to, you know, pay a small like 0.1% of their income into a pool and you just let you didn't really care about yourself getting it back, but you just focused on the, the like the poorest 20 percent of people on Earth because that money, you know, the poorest 20 percent of people on Earth getting a dollar a day of income would be like, you know, be enough possibly for food and shelter. Yeah. Um, and so you could unite the poorest part of humanity completely as a starting point. Wow, that's a great, great idea. And it just gives me a sense of how much more opportunity this blockchain can can give to humanity. So yeah. powerful. Yeah, and, with, and with universal translation, we could actually really collaborate, you know, so it wouldn't just be English speaking countries telling people this is how it works. We could. Um, so, yeah. I, but so basically, I think we humans, we need to start thinking about this. How do we organize? How do we restructure yeah and, uh, yeah but you know it also would help if the aliens just spoke to us just like revealed themselves i think that would help help us unite too yeah but i think they're afraid of of sparking something some kind of yeah. panic uh, i think that's what's going on yeah. so we just have to we have to get over the fear and yeah yeah kind of reassure them that they can communicate with us without terrifying us yeah well, with, with that in mind, do you uh, want to finish with a guided meditation today? Yeah, let's do that. I, I think a lot of what uh, what we're doing is really getting a sense of who we are, because if we're terrified about this whole alien thing, um, that tells us that that it just gives us information that, that, that that's not helpful. It's just not helpful. It's better to be centered, balanced, you know, some some way of positioning yourself to receive information because fear blocks uh, all kinds of wisdom. And uh, so we, we really want to get out of that. And that's why I think meditation is important when it comes to talking about aliens, because people get scared. So, yeah, so yeah, let's, let's just do a quick little, what do you think? 10 minutes? Sure. So 10 minutes just to get centered, just to come back into our own being, to let go of the anxiety of visitors from beyond and um, or even just the excitement of it. Let's just come back into our own body and our own 
you know, feet on the floor. Let me start with a little bell. So we'll take a couple of nice deep breaths. What we want to do is be, be more um, aware of our immediate environment. Just come right here, right now into this present moment, putting all thoughts to the side as best we can. So we'll follow a breath. Let's take one breath right now from the beginning and feel it filling our lungs all the way to the top. Feel that feeling of being full and then relaxing it, letting it just release. And as you're releasing your breath, just release all the concerns, maybe fears or anxieties we're just going to let everything go and just come right into the moment. This moment, and then this moment. Feel your feet on the floor. And feel your breath beginning to just come and go naturally. This is the space where if some higher consciousness wants to communicate, they're looking for this place of quietude, just silent, open, receptive mind. Following our breath, being present. So let's just take a couple of very quiet minutes. I won't talk and we'll just aim our thoughts and our heart to a higher consciousness as we breathe. Now we want to feel open, receptive, almost like a prayer, but no words, just in your, ba in your way of holding yourself. You're just wanting to find that peace right here in the moment, breathing in, breathing out. Receptive, curious, hopeful, without going into the stories about all that, those are the basic energy feeling tones that we want to hold as we breathe. And we're not really wanting to offer ourselves up on a platter. We still want to just maintain our grounded sense of being 
This isn't a way, a way of handing ourselves over to some other, you know, extraterrestrial consciousness. This is just us being who we are, feet on the ground, centered. When you're centered, you have a sense of stability. And from that place, it's just an invitation. There's no big reaching or pleading or wishing. It's just here we are with quiet minds, open to higher consciousness. Every time you notice your mind has wandered off, the noticing of it is a big part of the meditative process, noticing it, and then returning to watching your breath. The quiet mind is like a blank slate. And we can just offer it up to anyone who wants to share some greater wisdom with us. The communication is not always, or even very often for me, in the form of words, sentences. It comes in pockets of understanding. If you receive anything, most of the time, my meditations are just quiet. Breathing in, breathing out. Releasing any fear, any anxiety, just let it go. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, Dora. Until next time. Bye-bye.